Ice Valley. Hello and welcome back to Metroid Prime Remastered 100% hard mode. Uh, if you noticed in the introduction there, the voice said Ice Valley. So that's that's also new to me. I did not know that uh, it does that. Or that that was a, um, what do you call it? The alternate name for it. Hold on, my Joy-Con is not staying connected very well. Give me a second. Okay, that feels a bit better now. That uh, was not wanting to cooperate before. But anyways, now that we have our double jumps, we're going to go over here. There is something that we will have to break later. There's Cordite. We cannot break that yet. But we can go through here. And there's a Pulse Bomb. And a Scatter Bomb. And a Pulse Bomb. They like the bombers. We're going to climb our way up this room here with this uh, Chozo holding a platform. We also have a new enemy scan here. These are Ice Parasites, I believe. Yeah, scavenger with a crystal and outer shell. Parasites are hardy creatures able to adapt to any environment within three generations. Yes, parasite is a prime example, having adjusted to a frigid climate. This vermin now thrives in its omnivorous thrives in it. Omnivorous, it can exist in areas hostile to most life forms. So as you jump through here, just keep an eye out because there's also some crystallites and enemies that are meant to knock you off. Just be a little careful. Kind of, you know, just pay half attention as you jump. Don't blindly jump. Right here, we have something made out of brimstone. That was it. And we're going to do that. We're going to do that. And we're going to bomb. And now we can make our way through that door. Right through here, we're gonna bomb twice, come down, bomb twice, come back, quickly get up and through. I'm glad I did that. Glad I made that work. Oh, I didn't do it right. Oh well. I was trying to get the timing down again like I did that first one, but that's okay. It's still fun to kind of squeeze that timing in with that little window. Through here, we have something new. We have the wave beam. But things are shaking and... There's an invisible wall, it retracts into the ground, and we have a bunch of Shigas, as you remember me mentioning, I said we were going to fight him. So, missiles, just, you have to unload, that's really your best attack. You can use a couple charge shots on him, um, but missiles seem to work the best because that stuns him. So, if you want to save a little bit on missiles, you can just do one charge shot and then... Just do that. But that's the best way to handle them. Just try not to get hit. And there are boxes in the corners of the room for pickups if you need them. More missiles, more health, whatever you know you may need. Here we have the big mama. We made her mad. This is an adult Shiga. Supreme Predator of the Fendrana Drifts. Shigas are invulnerable to most beam weapons. The crystals on their back absorb energy, which they can fire at prey. Shigas have poor stamina. They hyperventilate after using their breath attack, making their mouth very vulnerable. The soft underbelly of a Shiga is susceptible to concussive blasts. In battle, they expel blasts of frigid gas to ensnare their targets. They are also fond of ramming and trampling their hapless prey. So, after when it starts hyperventilating, you can fill it with missiles. Uh, just wait here a minute here, and it'll... There we go. You can fill it with some missiles, but I, honestly, I didn't even hit it there. The best way is to carefully bomb it. Uh, don't get frozen, don't get hit, because you can take a lot of hits here. Uh, but you just want to get up close to her and bomb it. And this is the quickest way to put her down. Uh, the missile method takes a long time. Just don't get frozen like I almost did. There's probably, like, certain sweet spots you can sit in to do this. I've never really, like, mastered this technique, per se. I got frozen anyways, but you don't have to wait for it to hyperventilate either. You can just bomb whenever you want, and it'll still, for the most part, hit. Probably, like, right outside the foot here seems to work pretty well. And there we go.
And now we got the wave beam. We can now open purple doors and activate electrical panels. Let's scan this. Is this a big one? Yes, finally. New research entry. The missile launcher with 10 ammo. We needed that logbook. We can also get some more health and stuff here. Uh, but yeah, wave beam. Wave beam looks really nice. They did a good job remastering it. Electrical pulses everywhere. I mean, look inside the arm cannon there. Look, look at that. God, that is so cool. Look at that. Look at the wave being the way it looks. So, so clean. So super duper clean. Now we can go back the way we came. Uh, we are going to be heading to a new area inside the Fendrana Drifts. We can also now get rid of these guys with the electronic... Uh, electronic? Electrical currents of the wave beam. Now, it's not super duper powerful in particular. As you can see, it takes a lot of shots to kill these guys. Uh, the charge shots do have quite a punch to them. More than anything, because it's electricity, it stuns enemies pretty well. And it has a wider area of effect because of it being, you know, a big wave. But it still is not concussive, so it does not break those guys. Anyways, I did not mean to jump all the way down here. I tried to stop before I jumped all the way down here. Now we're stuck. We gotta get up the slow way. So now that we have the wave beam, we want to make our way back across up there. Well, actually more so that door, I think. But we can do so with these platforms. And never mind. You're supposed to be able to do it with those platforms, but if you're me, you ain't good at it. Now let's double check the map real quick, just, uh, just to be sure. That I am thinking right. It is in this room. Yes, it is. So, yeah, we'll just make our way right up there. I don't know how I just did that, but I almost flung myself backwards. But double jump, we have a shortcut to get right back up here, so that's nice. And you can get rid of the bombers here if you want to, but it is not uh, necessary. We're going to go right here. And in here we have a Chosa Lore that we can grab. As a great poison reaches ever further into the planet, we Chozo begin to feel the gnawings of despair. Before it is too late, we now make our last stand. We have begun to build a temple to contain this darkness. At its heart, we will place a cipher, a mystical lock powered by twelve artifacts and filled with as much power as we Chozo can harness. We wonder, though, even when we are done, will it be too late? And will the power of the temple and the cipher itself proves strong enough to hold that back that poisonous tide that even now swells within the ground, threatening our life. Who knows? Find out on the next Dragon Ball Z. I probably need to scan that. Uh, that's a stalactite. Can I scan it still? Nope. Alright, well, that's not a one-time thing, so... We can come back to another one later, but that's a logbook scan. This is also a logbook scan as well. This is the Ice Shriek Bat. Encased, ice encased ceiling dweller like standard Shriek Bats, these creatures are easily spotted with thermal imaging. They roost on cave ceilings. Subsisting on insects, reptiles, and small mammals, fiercely territorial, they will dive bomb anything that wanders near. Oh, excuse me. Uh, so, in the 1.0 version of the game, uh, the NTSC version at least, but in the 1.0 version of this game, um, if you don't get those guys now, at this point in the game, they will disappear forever and you will never be able to scan them again. So they're a one-time scan in the original versions. Also, scarabs here look different, but they are still just scarabs. They look a little bit icier here, though. Uh, but yeah, Ice Streak Bets were uh, pretty much one-time scans back in the old 1.0 GameCube version. <coughs> so, this room here is interesting. There's a whole big puzzle to this room that you can go up and get through. Uh, but you don't have to do that if you want to do a sequence break. You can kind of jump right up here. Jump right up on that ledge there. Takes a couple tries, but uh, we'll get it here. And then if you look up here, we can kind of push our way up. And it's it's it looks weirder than it is, but really you just jump and you kind of round the edge naturally. You just kind of hug and push your way up. 
This way is much, much, much faster. Much, much, much easier. The whole puzzle to this room is very pointless to me and just uh, slow. However, I do want to get something that is right underneath here, so we're going to grab it by hopping down. Uh, no, 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 no. We're gonna, we're gonna hop in the hole. And that's another energy tank. Now, if we're careful, uh, we weren't careful, we could have tried to do something different, but it's okay. We'll just do the same thing again, rinse and repeat. Take a couple tries here to get up there. And then look up, lock yourself in, and just push your way up. That way is so much simpler than doing the puzzle. Uh, right here we have a save station. And I would I would, I would end the episode off, but we kind of really need to keep going here. Uh, I think the last episode was... I, I think this one is going about 10 minutes right now, so... Uh, we have some logbook scans in here we can get. Not logbook scans, but we have some scans in general that we can get. Schematics for Glacier 1. Secure zone access. Personnel bound for research area. Proceed directly to checkpoint. <coughs> Over here, we have another one. Schematics for Research Lab Hydra accessed. To access Research Lab Hydra, proceed through the wave doors to the south. I didn't mean to walk in that again. Now, I, I've clarified this a couple of times, but I want to be super certain that uh, anyone following this is on the same page. I just fell. I pressed the wrong button. Uh, I, You do not have to scan everything in the game to get 100% logbook scans. Only the scans that show up as data recorded to logbook. Those are the ones that count towards completion. Uh, everything that is read, basically, and enemies and creatures, stuff like that. But your general just orange scans do not count towards logbook completion. So keep that in mind, they're not that important. Like, see, that was a red one, and that wasn't a logbook scan. So it's just, generally speaking. Um, but yeah, you don't have to scan everything. Oh, wow, that one broke with two. Interesting. Right here, we have a new enemy. Not really. We may recognize him. This is a Shadow Pirate. One of the space pirate forces trained and equipped for stealth operations. A select group of space pirates have access to sophisticated cloaking technology. This gear drains high levels of power, however, forcing them to rely solely on melee weapons in battle. Use enhanced detection gear when fighting <coughs> these units. Ah, oh, someone's talking some schmack about me again, I see. Alright, so, they take three missiles, or charge shot into missiles, but the best way to kill them is going to be with the wave beam. If we could scan this, auto turret malfunction, empty stasis tank used for biological specimens. Uh, if we scanned this originally, I think it would have turned off that turret, but unfortunately we killed the turret first. Circuit breakers for lab sub-processing. Interesting. Any more scans in here? Nope. Alright, so we're about to be hitting, heading into the Space Pirates Research Compound. Uh, I'm going to change my positions here and get a little more comfortable. <sighs> and hopefully not sneeze anymore. I never really listened to the music there. That's really interesting. This room's music is weird. Um... Anyways, we wanna we wanna we wanna get rid of that thing now before it causes issues in a little while. There we go. And defeat enemies to unlock doors. We have a whole bunch of standard Space Pirate Troopers. Space Pirates sentient aggressor species while trained in weapon and melee combat. Space Pirates wield galvanic accelerator cannons and forearm mounted scythes in combat. This species seeks to become the dominant force in the galaxy and their technology may help them realize this goal. Ruthless and immoral, the Pirates care little for the cost of their ambition. 
only the results matter, and they take these very seriously. So, since we're in hard mode, you can take a lot of damage from this many guys shooting at you all at once. Just keep dancing around, avoid their shots. Charge shots with the wave beam do home in. Uh, they do stun them as well, so you can kind of like stun lock them a little bit. Um, depending on, you know, how you go about it. But, generally speaking, it's not too bad. Just, um, trying to get hit too much, unlike what I'm doing. I'm getting hit a decent amount. But it doesn't take too much to get them all. Just a little bit of time patience. And that's all of them. Uh, we got that turret right before we came in as well, so. Through this door here, though, we have something important. We have a map station. And now we have the map for the area. So, we'll just leave that. We're gonna get a couple scans here. We've got Phazon ore is extremely durable and blast resistant. Although the armor light qualities of this shell provide ample protection, thermal imaging can be used to detect weak areas in the casing. Improvements must be made to this shell in the event that these weaknesses are found by aggressors. Keep that one in mind for later. Phazon ore appears to bind through Phazon energy. Thermal imaging is required to detect the highest concentration of radioactivity which serves to bind the stones together. Imaging research is being conducted in the containment, containment vault area of the facility. Project Titan specimen is immobilized in quarantine cave. Relocation is recommended due to increased violent activity. So, they're talking about some sort of big thing. East quarantine cave is restricted to blue level security. Authorized personnel permitted entry only after bioscan. So, they're talking about something. They're talking about something, and those are a couple of hints for, uh, for dealing with it if uh, we were to come across it. Uh, but that'll be a little bit later. For right now, this is... I want to say kind of a stealth operation. Not really, but it feels like one because you're trying to, you know, the music and everything makes it feel kind of stealthy. Uh, but we're sneaking around the Space Pirates complex, or compound, uh, research labs and all that. And we're going to be doing a lot of scanning, uh, reading a lot of things, and killing a lot of Space Pirates. Access to research lab, Hydra granted. So let's get rid of the enemies first. And then we'll worry about scanning afterwards. Now, where is the next one? Right behind me. There's a couple more on the next floor. But we gotta scan and get them down. Just so we can get this music to, uh, to shut off so we can peacefully read our things. Because while this music is nice, I really like the, uh, the Space Pirates theme in this game. It's, it's genuinely the best Space Pirates theme of the trilogy. Uh, it's very stressful. It does a very good job of being stressful. Because uh, there's just so much going on when you're fighting the Space Pirates, especially in this part of the game. Alright. There's still one more up here. There we go. And then... We get rid of this turret. If any luck, it'll actually knock out the space pirate. And hit him once. And there we go. Finally. Yeah, because it's hard mode, they take a long time to kill. That's why it uh, just takes so absurdly long. Anyways, we have a lot of scanning to do. So, let's get to work. All the red ones are logbook scans. All the orange ones are just general scans. We're going to look at everything. Ice beetle infestation in Ice Vault region has been 95% exterminated. Report any sightings to security immediately. Access to Research Lab Aether limited to Team Sclera only. Personnel bound for Hollow Observatory must use West Elevator. Increased acidity levels recorded in Phazon Amniotic Bath. This is likely a side effect of Phazon ingestion by test subjects. Phazon Fluid Bath levels at 70%. Checking diagnostics per procedure 120038. Specimen 043 decreased vital signs. Cold damping appears stable. 
No, I want this one in here. A new pirate data has been scanned. Log 10.5158. Our initial test exposing Talon 4's indigenous parasites to Phazon appear to be successful. Increases in strength, size, and aggressiveness are common in all test subjects, as well as unforeseen evolutions like additional poison sacs within the abdomen and appearance of second ring of mandibles in several subjects. These creatures were chosen because of their resilience, and it appears possible that given enough exposure to Phazon, they may one day be able to survive on any planet we transport them to. Our methods will have to be refined. We currently have a 100% extinction rate after the fourth infusion period, and most survivors of the third infusion stage are so violent and uncontrollable that they have to be euthanized. Even still, we remain hopeful that further experimentation will result in progress. So they are using this Phazon substance to mutate things, basically. <clears throat> and I mean, paying attention there, look at that. Definitely messing with their DNA. Let's continue. Stasis tank operational, but currently empty. Specimen 029, life signs normal, pulse at 140%, mass increase of 4%. Xenome SA is undergoing relocation to Lab Hydra. Subjects transfer ordered after a pronounced increase in aberrant, aberrant behavior. Security clearance ADR 13. A new pirate data has been scanned. Uh, log 103448. We have codified the newfound energy source as Phazon, a V index mutagen of which we have very little reliable data. Indications point to a meteor of unknown origin expelling Phazon into the environment. This material appears to possess the power to mutate organic life forms sufficiently to withstand its poison. These mutations appear promising, with abrupt evolutionary leaps appearing in every single generation of reproduction. Plans to establish a full science team on Talon 4 are being finalized. A new pirate data, log 10.5877. Mining operations have begun near the crater where Phazon appears to be most concentrated. Daily Phazon yields have increased 44% and our mining systems become more streamlined as personnel and equipment flows increase. Several incidents of Phazon-induced madness have been reported, prompting augmented life support regulations in the deeper chambers. Symptoms include loss of equilibrium, erratic respiration, muscle spasms, and in the most extreme cases, hallucinations. A timeline reassessment for the refinery operation is recommended as the material per proves more unstable than initial analysis indicated. God, it's so hard to read these big words. <laughs> Phase on infusion with central energy core of the Xenome SA is at 70% saturation. Increased dosage appears viable. A new pirate data entry has been downloaded to your logbook. Log 10 7121. Most terraforming and retrofitting of security checkpoints on Talon 4 is complete, but we continue to research the alarming epidemic of breaches by local creatures. Door records show no unauthorized entries, so we must presume the creatures are either slipping in undetected during daily personal moves, or else finding their way in through subterranean tunnels. We have found many small breaches of them this of this latter sort and plugged them wherever we can, but it is unlikely that we will ever achieve full extermination within our current timetable. Stasis deck operational and empty. Specimen 002, euthanized. 1294 after psychotic episodes scheduled for removal. And, oh, there's one here we missed. Stasis tank operating at 40% capacity. Oh, well, no, there's more. Temperatures regulation errors have been rectified as of 121124. What I don't get is, that's that's a Metroid. But they're talking about ice beetles. But that's a Metroid. So is that. That's also a Metroid. That's DNA. Alright, is that it for this floor? Is that all of our, is that all of our scans for this floor? Because we still got another floor. I think that's it. I am lightheaded after that. Rapid speaking. Oh, man. All right. So let's continue. There's one here, I think. No, there's not. But there is more up here. Phase on batch 1734D shows mandible mutation across all subjects. Cross infusion with batch 1622G recommended. Mutation strain 776-V shows massive absorption capacity influx. Strain replication is now underway. <clears throat> Xenome behavioral patterns show decreased reflex activity at temperatures below freezing. Uh, there's a bunch up there, but we're looking at this right here. Transfer of specimen 344 to Lab Hydra complete. Further infusion suspended pending security assessment. Prep work on all empty stasis tanks must be completed before specimen batch Y arrives on 12 3 12 2. 
Uh, if you need some health and stuff, you can destroy this and destroy that. Which, we did need some health. And some more scans. Tissue samples from stasis tanks must be hand carried to Lab Hydra for analysis. Notify security of all material moves. A new pirate data has been scanned. Log 106642. Research outpost, research outpost Glacier 1 in the Fendrana Drist region of Talon Forest Mountains is operating at 85% capacity. Sub-zero temperatures have made the Metroid sluggish and easy to control, even those well into the phase on infusion cycles. Cold containment stasis tanks are sufficient for the juveniles, but some of the larger Metroids have been moved to quarantine caves for safety purposes. Security doors remain an issue as malfunctions due to ice occur every day. Large predators in the wastes are also a concern, as they continue to kill personnel and breach secure areas. Unfortunately, it has become clear that our containment teams cannot neutralize all of them without a vast increase in munitions and soldiers. So they are indeed messing with Metroids. And they're trying to mutate them as well. Daily decontamination is now required for all personnel working in Lab Aether. Where is that one at? Well, I guess that one's right here. Specimen 070, optimal absorption mutation has led to unexpected degeneration of internal organs. Warning, do not handle sedated xenomes without proper ice containment equipment. Okay, same thing. Same thing, got all that. Anything else here? There is this right here. Cordite casing, so we cannot get that right now, but we will be able to get it on the way out. All right. Let's make some more progress. We've got some turrets in here, but if you stand all the way back here, you're just barely out of the range, so watch this. You can make a charge up to shoot you, and then... Well, I guess that doesn't work in this version. But, yeah, you can just kind of... You can, you can keep your range and, uh, you know... And just get rid of them. And then refill your missiles that you use with these crates right here, so that's very, very generous of them. One right there as well. All right, in this room here, we have more pirates. These are just uh, standard troopers right now, so they can shoot at you. Keep that in mind as you try and get through and, you know, exterminate the pests. You can do it quicker if you want to use uh, missiles, but at this point, that guy's all the way over there. There's no risk. He's dead. But two more fall down. And they start going nuts. One more ought to do it. There we go. And now with the enemies wiped out, we have a scan we can do right there. But also, this, these uh, these panels just fell down, so that was kind of neat. Holographic spatial schematic is in lockdown per Security Directive 223-445. A new pirate data has been scanned. Log 10-2992. Scans of the spiral sector detective a massive... Huh, we're going to do that over again. Scans of the spiral sector detected a massive energy spike emanating from a Wanderer-class planet identified as Talon 4. Scout reconnaissance was immediately dispatched to the center of the spike, a landmass at heading mark 48-2, returning with planetary samples and atmospheric imaging. Analysis shows that the energy source to be an unstable radioactive material of enormous potential. We are unable to form an accurate risk assessment at this time, but we are unlikely to find an energy source this powerful again. Analysis will continue, but currently Talon 4 appears to be a viable secondary headquarters. Scanning that one. That's not really a logbook scan, but that activates these uh, bomb slots. We also have holographic map coordinate data has been updated successfully, and a new pirate data. Log 10 4017. Phase on mining is underway. Several garrisons have been established, and terraforming of the Chosa Ruins is underway. Security systems are operational, and science team continues to make progress in their biotech research. The Fendrana Drifts have proven to be an optimal location for research headquarters, and soon it will be joined by a fully operational combat base and starport. If command's predictions are half true, we shall rise to dominance in this sector within a deca cycle. Truly, these are glorious times. Or so they thought. <clears throat> okay, sorry about that. 
All that reading is killing my throat. Anyways, let's go ahead and activate this bomb slot. And that will start a puzzle. Now, before we jump over there, there's a scan on here. Upper note of astronomical holographic projector is retracted and inactive. So we can jump on top of these to kind of save a little bit of time and get up here. Makes things a little bit easier. You don't got to go all the way around. I always find that really annoying having to go all the way around. And down here we have a new type of mechanism. These are not bomb slots. These are called spinners. And I'm sure you can imagine what we're supposed to do inside of them. But they are indeed a logbook scan. This is a standard spinner device. The generator belts out of the spinner can... The generator belts out of the spinner can be activated by rapid rotational force. Use the boost ability of the morph ball when inside a spinner to activate the device. I don't know why that was hard to read, but it was. So you just boost inside of it several times, and uh, yeah. We've got four of these to activate. Here is our last one. If we can make it in. So, we have now reactivated the projector, and we have uh, got, got a little gift up there. So let's, let's make our way up. But before we do, let's scan some planets. Planet Billium, mass 3.8 trillion teratons. Profile, quarantine. Atmosphere is rife with materials, my, my, mitoralis, a sentient gaseous global exterminator virus. Sentient? gaseous global exterminator virus. That sounds terrifying. A new research entry has been downloaded to your logbook. Planet Zebus, mass 4.8 trillion teratons. Profile, planet's crust is primarily urethic or making it ideal for subterranean construction. A class X1X, planet Zebus is inhospitable to most bioforms. The world was considered unremarkable until it became a base for space pirate forces. X1X is... what is that? Was that 19? Because uh, XX would be 20, so X1X would be uh, class 19, I believe. I was trying to scan a planet. Planet Twin Tabula, mass 4.1 trillion teratons. Profile, planet is best known for twin fever, a disease caused by a viral strain native to Twin Tabula. In the early stages of the disease, victims suffer from double vision. When the twin sight fades, the victim is near death. And there will be another planet that pops up here to scan. Just gonna keep an eye out for it. There it is, it's a logbook scan. This one is Planet Talon 4, mass 5.1 trillion teratons. Ecosystem studies indicate that Talon 4 was a biological paradise prior to the impact of an extraterrestrial object, but remains of the biosphere is slowly fading due to exposure to phase on radiation. At a current rate of decay, Talon 4 will be a barren class uh, 13 wasteland in approximately 25 years. And I think that's all the planets. Lower note of astronomical holographic projector functioning normally. Yeah, I think that's all the planets that we can scan. I didn't mean to do that. Nope, there's one more. Planet Dormine 2, mass 2.3 trillion teratons. Profile, an uninhabitable wasteland savaged by nuclear dust storms and constant seismic upheavals. Okay, that's it. Uh, we can go right here. And we can go right here. And we can go right here. And now we have the super missile. So, you charge up a, a charge beam attack, fire a missile at the same time, and you get a super missile. I will demonstrate. Very useful, very powerful, uses five missiles. Uh, very good for bosses, and unlocking a boss room. I mean, a, a save room, sorry. All holo technicians report to main observatory. Maintenance required on both holo modules. I fixed it already. Chief Astrogation Officer feels our current dual holo projector system is obsolete. Please review and advise. Alright. Well, anyways, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I will see you in the next one where we will continue infiltrating the Space Pirate Complex.